What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another banger video. As usual, my name is James with Top Class Detail and today, today is kind of a different video. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the process on how I do my maintenance services. A lot of you guys ask me, how do you wash the cars? What do you do? How do you get them done in 45 to an hour and a half? And today I'm gonna to let you in on that process, exactly what I do from start to finish, from the inside all the way to the outside. So without further ado, if you guys like today's video, make sure to share it with somebody, whether it's on Instagram, text it to them, or even just post it, tag me, and I'll try my best to repost it as always, as well as make sure to drop any future video ideas down below. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing we did is we b always blow out the inside. So with these floor mats, I always like to pull these out. If there are any WeatherTech mats, make sure you pull those out first. Try to hold as much of the dirt as you can inside the mat and try not to drop it on the floor. After you pull out all the mats, we'll then blow out the interior. So you guys always see me use my Tornador. I love that gun. It's gonna help to clear out any debris that may be stuck in the cracks or crevices, as well as push all that dirt into one area so you're not having to vacuum everything and deal with the mess all over the place. It's gonna really just isolate a lot of that dirt as well as blow it out to make your wipe down easier and your vacuum a lot easier. So right now you see me with my Mr. Bottle. I have ASC from Coach Cami in here, just straight. You don't dilute that and a brand new towel. So all I'm gonna do is simply start my wipe down while I already did my blowout. So as you can see, it looks very clean. It looks like there's not much dirt on the surface. And that's because one, the car is already pretty well maintained and two, now blowout helped to blow off any dirt that was gonna cause us to have to sit here and fight with it. Or also just like I say, make the job easier by doing that first initial step. So take this, do a little shake and just simply mist it. Now, depending on where you're working, if it's in the sun, you may just wanna work in a small area like I did right now. But if it's early morning or late afternoon where it's not too hot, then you can definitely spray the entire door and be fine. But even with this right now, the sun's facing the other way. So I am in a pretty good shape where I don't have to worry about any of that. And I'm just simply gonna take my time to wipe everything down and make sure I'm hitting all areas. Um, quick little tip is to kind of look at the small little things in here like these little cracks and crevices you can see right here there's like some coffee or something that spilled in between there so that's something i want to make sure i take care of as well as like the little parking brake areas move this down see if you see anything in there because you may not see it while it's right up but when you push it down that's when you can kind of get a glimpse into that as well as these little like 12 volt things just pay attention to the smaller areas when the car is already clean, it's more about the details than it is the bigger areas. Okay, so while I'm doing the wipe down on the vehicle, after we already did the blowout and took out the floor mats, I'm gonna have Fabian start vacuuming everything. That's gonna just help get through things a little bit faster so we're not wasting time. As soon as he's done with the vacuum, if I'm still wiping down, he'll start on the wheels or we'll just always have somebody moving at all times. This way, somebody's always doing something and they're not just kind of standing around wasting time like that. So right now I'm just gonna pull out the hose. Fabian's already started pre-treating the wheels just so I can knock off majority of that dirt because this car for sure hasn't been detailed in like about a month or so. Um, so this is gonna help knock down all that pre-dirt that's on there. So this way when we come through, it'll be a little bit less work as well as may not have to do much if the wheel cleaners clean it up as I want it to. So I just went ahead and rinsed this wheel. So you can see 
Um, the reason I went ahead and did a pre-treat is just because the wheels were very dirty. Now, usually you can do it dry. Me personally, I was just testing out the products, wanting to see exactly how well it could work to take off majority of the dirt. It did very well. So now what I'm going to do is I have my wheel bucket with my barrel brush as well as some other brushes in here. I'm going to go ahead and attack the inside first. So by that, I'm going to go inside the barrel. Then from there, I'm going to attack the face, then hit the actual tire and go from there. So with that being said, I'm going to take my easy detail brush. This is my favorite tool to use for barrels. I don't use any other brush for the inside. This is my go-to. And I'm just going to simply take it and agitate back and forth. Now I do have soap in this bucket, so I don't necessarily have to throw any more wheel cleaner, but if needed, don't hesitate to go ahead and just spray a little bit in there just so you can help agitate with some foam. So you can see back going side to side, back and forth, making sure to hit behind the actual wheels. And then if you need to, to go ahead and dump it, get a little bit more lubrication and boom. You can see this one does fit very well behind these big calipers. Now there are some where you might have to pull out the smaller one, but luckily this one's doing the job where I don't need to. So now I'm gonna take my Max Shine wheel mitts and I'm just simply gonna go ahead and start hitting the face of the actual wheel. So now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna hit just the wheel lugs, the lug nuts, just to make sure I'm kind of cleaning out any dirt that may be in there, as well as this little logo. And then now, like I said, inside out, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of wheel cleaner onto this wheel, just so we can get some product on there. Then we're gonna grab our Detail Factory tire brush and start scrubbing away. So now sometimes it is best to go at it um, dry so you can really lift off that dirt and that grime. But like I did, I went at it dry first. If there's still some dirt remain, rinse it off and go at it like this. And you should be good after that second scrub to go ahead and leave it. But as you can see, these are very dirty. So now I'm going to take my other easy detail brush and just simply make sure I hit these to knock off any of that dirt or any grime that's going to be there. And this is a very important step because if these get missed, it is pretty noticeable and you definitely don't want your client to run their finger and show you some dirt that was left behind. Now at that point, we're just about good to go. I'm gonna take the Kranzel, rinse it off, make sure to rinse the, the wheel liner and then from there move on to the actual paint. I bought a cool little hat. All right, so right now, at this point, you have two options. You can either go around and foam it up and start your agitation wash, or you can go the safe route that I'm gonna go and hit it with Green Star or a pre-foam before you actually go in with the actual wash mitt. So as you can see, the car is very filthy. All this grime down here is gonna get in your wash mitt as well as scratch the vehicle. So in here, I have a Green Star. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this around and then we'll foam it up, let that sit rinse that off and then we'll go at it one more time before we actually uh, do our agitation. But I'm actually going to spray this all over the vehicle because there's a lot of dirt on there. And for those of you that aren't too familiar with Green Star, that is Coach Kemi's universal cleaner. So it's also known as an all-purpose cleaner. You can use it for anything, interior, exterior, whatever it is you want. You just have to dilute it properly. Now with this one, I pour about one liter and the rest water. Now the exact dilution, I don't know the numbers, but I know it's about a four to one. But I just like to pour a whole liter in here and the rest water, and that seems to do justice for me. Safe on paint, safe for waxes, safe for sealants, and definitely plastic. Uh, foam it. All 
All right, so now that we sprayed Green Star, I'm gonna go ahead and foam up the vehicle, let that really sit, soak up everything, and kind of bring all that dirt from the top to the bottom. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, rinse it off, foam it up again, and then go in with our hand wash. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is go at it with the detail brush, hit all the cracks, crevices, probably the lower parts of the vehicle. And then from there, rinse it off, foam it up again, and then we'll go in with the actual contact wash. But just while the soap's on there, I wanna make use of it hit it with this detail factory brush actually, hit all the logos and other parts so this way we can get that taken care of. So now we just went ahead and rinsed off all that original um, foam cannon soap that we did. So now we're going in with the second application of snow foam. This is gonna help add a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a lubrication. So when we go in with our wash mitts, we're not gonna have to worry about scratching or at least be a little bit safer. As well as this is gonna help also lift any remainder dirt that's still on that surface that didn't come off with that first initial pre-wash. Now for this one, I did mix two soaps. I mixed Active Foam and GSF. Now I probably should have done that for the first one, but the only reason I didn't do it was because it was already pre-mixed with GSF. But nonetheless, that heavier soap is gonna help break down that dirt, lift up that grime and make it a lot easier for you when you go in with that wash or let alone just help make it a safer wash for you. Okay, so right here you have my actual wash bucket. So I have the wash mitts that I speak very highly about. These are the flat out wash mitts. Now I carry two of them because if it's me and Avena or let alone just me, it'll make it a lot easier instead of having to constantly dunk that one, I can just flip to the other one and hit that same half. I could basically knock out the whole half of one area without having to do a single dunk and then I can dunk them and hit the other area and work a little bit faster. Now you see this red towel, this right here, I have laid out. Um, I don't want to throw it in there. This is going to be my dirty towel. So what you'll see when I show you the wash process is I love to work from top to bottom. I'll only wash to about roughly here and I'll leave this entire bottom area open for this rag, which is going to take care of all that dirt and grime. It's not going to allow it to mix in with my other wash mitts. So I'm going to start right here. Now what you can do is kind of split the cars in the half. And what I mean by that is you'll see, I'm going to flip the wash mitt before I dunk it. So I'm going to use my one half right here on this door. I'm going to go from top to bottom, make sure to hit these pillars and then work my way right here into the side mirror. Don't forget to get the inside of it. And then what I've found that I like to do is kind of push them out. So this way that all that dirt will get hit with the soap as well as when you rinse it, you'll be able to knock that out. So with that same side, I'm still going to just come through here, make sure to go under the door handles back and forth motions i'm not going in circles or anything like that and then from there like i said stop right here at this lower area i'm going to flip it now this is a clean unused side and i'm going to simply just hit this fender same thing top to bottom back and forth and same thing right here i'm not going to go below this line i'm going to keep it like that now when i spoke to you earlier regarding this red towel that's where this comes in i'm going to simply flip it into about fours take it and still in one motion, not going back and forth, just knocking out this whole dirty piece as one. And then if I need to, go a bit lower and hit this under part. Now, there's gonna be a lot of blackness to this rag, and that's just gonna help show you all the dirt that could possibly be in the wash mitt to transfer over to the vehicle. Now, simple as that, what I'm gonna do is leave this outside the bucket. I'm going to dunk the wash mitt against my scrub wall, make sure to clean it out. And then from there, repeat the same process. So remember, like I said, I usually carry two. If Fabian wasn't using the other one, I could have grabbed the other one and knocked out both these panels and saved myself the time. He's already hitting the roof, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But as I speak about that top to bottom, that is gonna be like the great, 
the best way to start is hit that first and then move your way down to here. But you'll see as we rinse everything, I am going to start from the roof just to make it a bit easier. But I'll speak on that once we get there. So right now, after the wash, you can see we have Fabian going around with the uh, blower. That's going to help remove any water that's in the cracks or crevices. But right now, the, the lawnmower people, the gardeners are throwing dust everywhere. So I'm going to have them come re-blow this to knock all that dust off. But essentially, um, the blower is going to help remove any of that water you see when you drive and it falls out your mirrors or your trunk, your gas cap. That's what that blower is going to help do. And the towel is just going to pick up any uh, resembling water or any residual water that's still on the surface. And then also another thing I want to let you guys know is the reason I am able to get a lot of the end results that I am able to uh, achieve has to do with the spotless water. So that spotless water is really the main thing you need to have. Um, if you don't have it, it's definitely going to make life a lot harder. But you can just see like, for example, if you look at this, uh, this right here, there's no water spotting on it. It's already dry. It would it can literally be good to go but I'm just going to wipe up the other water that dripped just so this way I'm not leaving anything behind and I'm good to go. But definitely though, I want to throw that out there. The reason I am able to do what I'm doing is that spotless water. So if you don't have spotless water and if you're not too sure what that is, that's just filtered water. It's just a special kind of water that has all the dirt and all the minerals taken out of it. So this way it doesn't leave that little ring or that water spot it is that you're used to seeing. So if you don't have that, one thing I do suggest is try to wash in the afternoon when it's late, it's cool, it's not as hot, and try to wash in a shaded area if you can. If you don't have any of those, try to get a canopy. There's, there's always going to be a reason you can do something, but try to find the other reason as to how you can get it done. So if it's sunny in one area, try to move it to another area. If you can not provide the shade, try to use a canopy. If at all you can't get anything on your side, wash in sections, wash in small areas, or try to use like an optimum no rinse product that will help kind of make the water a bit easier to work with and not spot as easy. Now we are moving on to the windows, which a lot of people find to be the hardest part of the detail or the most difficult because they deal with streaking. Whereas me, I love it. I just like to use stoner invisible glass. That's my go-to uh, window cleaner when it comes to hot situations or anything like that. So I'll use it right there. And then right here is gonna be the biggest difference. Look at this windshield. You see it? You catch that on camera. Got it? So there you guys have it. You guys got to see the process on how I do my maintenance washes or let alone just any type of regular wash. So just to give you a quick recap, we started at the wheels first. We did the inner barrels to the outside, then the actual tire. Then from there, we moved into the wheel wells. You don't want to leave those behind. That's something that usually gets neglected and missed. So we made sure to hit those. After that, we went through with our pre-rinse on the actual vehicle with just water. Then we used Green Star. We went ahead and soaked it up. After that point, we let it sit for about five minutes or so until it almost dried up on the vehicle. Then from there, rinse it off, pre-foamed it up again, and then we went in with our agitation wash. After that, we took out our blower, made sure to dry out all the cracks, crevices, mirrors, wheels, tires, so this way we can apply our tire shine to a dry tire, as well as avoid 
as many water spots as we can or should I say water drippings from any of those trunk areas or those side mirrors. Now after that went ahead, dressed the tires, made sure to wipe everything else down. You saw me do the interior windows as well as the whole interior process. So just to give you guys that inside recap, we blew it out, went to our wipe down, then from there did the vacuum, closed it up and moved on to the outside. So if at all you guys have any other questions or you're confused by anything or any part of this process, feel free to reach out to me. As well as if anyone's been trying to book an appointment, I highly suggest you please reach out through us, reach out to us directly through our number, not DMs as DMs are very crazy, very hectic and we never really get the chance to reply back to them. But besides that, I definitely want to say thank you to everybody who's been checking me out, um, supporting the channel, supporting the Instagram, or even if you booked a detail with me, let alone if you have not any other way, any other type of support that you could show, I truly do appreciate that. Now, nonetheless, this is James with Top Class Detail. As usual, I hope everyone has a blessed and wonderful day. Hope you guys are doing something to better yourself or your business in any way possible. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these little how-to tutorials. If you do like them and want to see more or you have something else you want me to tackle, maybe how I do my interiors or how I do extractions, definitely drop that down below. And don't forget, I did drop a video with Pan the Organizer. So if you guys have not checked that out, make sure to go show some love over to Pan. He was gracious enough to feature us on his channel. And I say us because if I'm on there, you guys are on there as well. We are all together as one. So he was grateful enough to feature us and the video is doing crazy. Last time I checked, it's had about 50,000 views. So definitely check that out if you haven't. Go show him some love. Say James from Top Class Detail sent you and say thank you for allowing us to be a part of that. Without further ado, this is James. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'm out of here.